Hello and welcome to Tinkertube's lab. Last week I visited a friend of mine who had a whole bunch of vintage test equipment lying around waiting to be just thrown into the garbage. As you know me, I couldn't let that happen, so I got a quite a huge pile of stuff lying beneath me, which needs to be worked at, but I thought let's take a look at one of the things I got from him. Here I have a Hartmann and Brown Multavi 2, which is, as you maybe can see, it's just a volt and amp meter. Um, it's really a vintage one because those things were built around World War II, so 1935 to 1945, around this time period. Um, I don't know which date exactly this one has. I guess we will see when we take a look inside. But for now, I thought we could check if it still works. So let's plug some test leads in. We have here the voltage input lines. Um, it's quite interesting to notice we have a not a common ground but a common positive. So we should connect this and that. And I have my trusty and crusty Voltkraft multimeter to compare and a fresh new here's still the protection cap a fresh and new 9 volt battery block to check this or prove it we just take a short measurement and we can see it's 9.66 volts so I already connected it the right way and chose the 30 volt um, the 30 volt range and you also have to choose if you want to measure direct current or um, or alternating current so I did that also so and let's take a just a look we connect the negative pole and the positive and we can see the current current scale is the the one at the bottom and we can see we have 5 volts at I, I, I guess I should the zoom a bit so you can see it better we have 5 volts at this position we have 6, 7, 8, 9 so it should be it's kind of a half a volt off but we didn't correct the zero point so maybe we should do that at first and no, let's measure again uh, still we have 9 point uh, let's say 9.2 volts which isn't perfect but you have to know that it, it is around 80 years old so I guess that is quite accurate for that age. The instrument itself has a accuracy class of 1% at full scale while measuring direct current and 1.5% full scale while measuring alternating current which isn't that bad compared to modern uh, analog multimeters. Um, so I'm quite fascinated about how accurate it was back then. Even though this is an analog meter, you can really read small values with it. Well, what is small compared to modern CPU voltages, for example, but taken into account the voltages you had back then in the time, um, I guess you can really say it is a small voltage you can read. You can read down to 0 0.05 milliamps, which will be 50 microamps. I mean, 50 microamps. We are talking about 1940. So what other things can we tell about it? Let's take a look at the sides. There are some ventilation holes, also on the other side. Or maybe, maybe there are 
no, there aren't any pots. I thought you maybe you can adjust something around it, but you can't. <laughs> On the back side you have a little instruction. It is written in German, but if you translate it, it just says Please note, before switching it on, place the big switch, this one, to zero and the small switch on the type of current you want to measure. I just noticed it is written in English. Okay. Um, also, there are the internal resistances written, which are... Uh, I guess I don't have to read them out. You, if, if you are interested, you can just read them by yourself. So, let's take a look inside. To open it, we just hopefully have to open those four flathead screws. By the way, it is quite interesting to see those screws are mounted in little metal cans like 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 cups nearly i wonder why they did it maybe to protect the i don't know if it is patinux it feels like it patinux or maybe some early form of plastic Ah, I see. It's just a really, really thin and flimsy sheet of plastic or cardboard, whatever, which needs protection while screwing it down, so I guess that is why they use these cups. And, yeah, that's, I guess we can take a look inside. And just take a look at this. This is the current shunt, I guess for what range whatsoever. I have no idea how they switch ranges. I guess we have to dig a bit further down. If we can dig further down. Oh yes, I guess I can. I guess we can. There are some more screws. I have to bend this shunt a bit. I hope it, I don't damage it while doing it. And l take a look at this absolute monstrous switch. That thing is beefy. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that nice? That is so... I would love to see switches like that today. Hello, screw. So, let's dig in deeper. Hello? Why are you no fit? Out. Oh well, I have some more of those, so if I break it, it would be quite quite sad, but nothing is lost forever. Ah, that was a tight fitting screen. It still had the original lacquer on it. I wonder if after assembling, this thing was ever opened again. I don't think so. But we still don't get access to the inside. Why? It is so 
stiff. I have the feeling there are still 20 screws left. But where? I can't see any screws. Except from those. But I doubt they are the only one. How the hell do you open that thing? Ah, is it glued? No, no, it's it's just a gasket. Okay, it's just an old gasket which is so sticky. It's incredibly sticky. Just be careful. We don't want to bend the needle on our instrument. Take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, actually, it looks quite nasty, but it's this this vintage touch you get from it. It's you can you can feel the oldness of this thing. Look at this hand wound shunt resistor here. I guess it is one. It's quite nice tied together with those just little straps of wooden uh, of, 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 of cloth and we have some other I zoom in a little bit we have some other uh, wound wire round shunts from here and also I guess this could be the rectifier used for the uh, alternating current measurement because I can't see any selenium rectifiers in here which would be appropriate for the time. Hmm. Oh, that is nice. <laughs> Take a look at that resistor where they just put... Oh, come on, focus. Where they just put the wire through the resistor. <laughs> Isn't that neat? I like that. Another wire round precision, maybe, shunt resistor. Double one, maybe different voltage or amperage ranges. And everything is just wired by hand. Yeah, so little mounting poles here around the switch, which protrude to the back side of the switch assembly, which I just noticed I didn't have to disassemble. Oh well. Um, it is actually this completely passive. There are no active components. Actually, well, why shouldn't? Why should there be any active components? It can't measure resistance, so. We don't need a voltage source. Um, but yeah, I think it is really nicely built. If you look, take a look inside here, you can see the selector switch for alternating or direct, direct current. And if I operate it, which isn't that easy, it is really stiff. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah, yes, it's hard to see, but you see those three metal contacts in, the, in there? If you operate the switch, they just go like this. And um, they contact to... where are they going? They're going over here. One side is going to the instrument, and that isn't, isn't a big surprise. And the other side is going Yeah, the other side is going to this puppy here which will be 
our dry rectifier. I guess it is the selenium rectifier. I don't think it is germanium. That would possibly be a bit too early. Hmm. On the other hand, if we have a maximum voltage range of 600 volts, that thing would be huge if it was selenium. Hmm. Interesting. There aren't any markings on it, so <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. If you have any idea what kind of rectifier this is, please write it in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Yeah. So this resistor is it burnt? Or is it just... Oh no, really. If you take a look at this resistor, you see, you can clearly see the windings uh, around this you can clearly see the burnt, the burn marks of the windings going around the tube. Huh. I wonder if the amperage, the amper ranges still work. Maybe we can check this out. So let's take a look. So as we already noticed, we have a resolution of around 50 microamps on the 0 0.003 amp scale. Um, so I try to get a multitude of 15, 50 microamps on the, dig dig on the dig digital meter. And I guess we should compare with the, uh, the value shown by the analog meter. So I guess 260 is okay. It's, at least it's near enough. And um, you can see some fluctuation. This is just because the uh, internal resistance is heating up, so the value of the resistance is sinking. And I guess we can see it is quite similar. We have around around 200 yeah around 200 microamps on the analog scale which is a bit off but i mean we're talking about 50 microamps that is quite nice so let's switch this a bit up so let's switch it range up or a few ranges let's go to 300 milliamps. 